Hi, this is Manos Perlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, and this is case 49 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of undergrade crossing in which the Carlino technique was used to allow crossing. The patient presented with exertional angina and was found to have a mid LAD CTO. It was an occlusion with a blunt proximal cap, with an ambiguous proximal cap a large diagonal at the origin of the occlusion and then a bifurcation on the distal cap with the septal coming over the distal cap. There were septal collaterals coming from the posterior descending artery into that inferior branch. However, those collaterals did not appear to be very good for retrograde approach because they were connected to the inferior septal branch but not in the main LAD and they were actually emptying very close to the distal cap. So in summary, we had an ambiguous cap, about 30 mm long occlusion, bifurcation of the distal cap and some septal collaterals, but probably not the best. And that is why the first approach was undergrade wire escalation, followed by undergrade dissection reentry and leaving retrograde as the last resort. We did intravascular ultrasounds and clarified the location of the proximal cap. And then we were able to perform undergrade wire escalation with a filter XT guide wire that seemed to be advancing in the right plane. There is movement of the wire in sync with the mid LED. However, despite multiple efforts, we were unable to advance a variety of wires such as the Gaia Second, Filder XT and Pilot 200 further down. There was likely tortuosity and calcification and the wire was stuck. We attempted to create a knuckle wire so that we can go subintimally and re-enter into the LAD. However, the knuckle also would not penetrate past that area. So essentially we were stuck into the occlusion proximal to the distal cap. In cases like this, one potential solution is to use the Carlino technique in which a small amount of contrast, usually half to one cc, is injected through a microcatheter that is advanced as far as possible inside the occlusion. This is an example. There is contrast actually instead of going forward, it is going mainly backwards, which can be a problem because it could compromise the flow into the proximal vessel. However, in this particular case, there remained flow into the diagonal and that is why we had a safety wire in the diagonal branch to protect it if something should happen to the more proximal vessel. And immediately after this, very easily with a pilot 200 guide wire, we were able to cross through the occlusion into that septal branch at the distal cap. This is therefore an example where the Carlino technique did cause some micro dissection, created a potential channel for the wire, which then very nicely followed through the occlusion distal to the distal vessel. Of course, the challenge now was that the wire was not in the main LAD, but in the septal branch. How could we advance a wire in the main branch? And there are many solutions to that. One is to advance a dual loom microcatheter and advance the second wire over it. But sometimes the other option is get a knuckle wire in there and then be able to hook the main vessel coming back. In this particular case, however, the turnpike would not advance past that area, past that area of the middle AD, probably because of severe tortuosity. Try it again with another wire, we could not do it. And we cannot advance a twin pass past the middle AD to the distal cap. Once again, those severe calcification. However, by doing a significant wire escalation with another pilot 200 wire, we were then able to advance through the distal cap into the LAD. The lesion could not be crossed with the microcatheter, but then once we did dilation with a threader balloon, we were then able to deliver the turnpike LP distal to the distal cap into the distal true lumen. After switching for a workhorse wire, we did dilate the entire occlusion. There's, of course, a lot of dissection in both planes. And then we placed the stand within the mid LAD and then one more in the distal LAD covering all the area of dissection. We did jail the wire into this diagonal branch as a safety precaution. 
And there was flow initially, and there's still some flow into there. But then once we postulated, we did lose the flow in the diagonal branch. The lesson being that we should have probably rewired the diagonal branch before performing aggressive high pressure post dilations in the middle AD. We did several attempts to recross into their branch. However, we were unsuccessful and they were finally abandoned. But the patient did have a successful result with the canalization of the LAD all the way. It was a long procedure. About half of this time was spent trying to wire through the diagonal branch, 71.6 minutes of fluoroscopy and 1.2 gray. Several lessons are from this case. The first one is that use of IVUS can help clarify proximal camp ambiguity. The second is that when the wires cannot penetrate, that is wire impenetrable lesions, use of the Carlino micro dissection technique with contrast can help create a channel that facilitates subsequent wire crossing. The third is for balloon and crossable lesions to have an algorithm on how to approach them and quite often use of the threader catheter can provide some crossing and facilitate microcatheter advancement. And lastly, it is important to protect the side branches both at the proximal and distal cap. In this case, probably we should have rewired the diagonal branch after we perform standing of the main vessel before performing high pressure post dilation, which have minimized the risk for losing that branch during this post dilation. Thank you.